I had to get away from the car park. KB7 USA, KB9 RLW, Hawkeye. You're in there. Hello. Yeah, I was standing too close to the uh, car park a moment ago. Big steel uh, frame. <laughs> I guess that was doing it. This is only about one watt output. So it's making the trip. That's yeah, pretty cool. It runs off the uh, runs off the cell phone. It's a completely self-contained unit. You'll see it in the video. Hey, thanks for the help, Bob. KB9 RLW. Hey, have a good Hello YouTubers, fellow hams. Well, this is a neat thing. <laughs> this little guy here is the KV4P HT, a fully open sourced, love that, project from Vance, KV4P. He's been working on it for over a year. This tiny little PC board in here, it comes as a kit, has only three components. It has an RF module, an ESP32 microcontroller, uh, board and this little SMA connector here. Now this is a female SMA um, standard type like you'd see on a frequency analyzer or a spectrum analyzer or VNA or whatever. So your Baofeng style antennas which are the reverse SMA will not screw onto here automatically. You'd have to order one with a specific um, SMA connector or put a BNC adapter on like I did. And then, uh, as Vance has shown on his website, he's got this gel pack on here, this glue pack. And this is a real sticky stuff, but it does not leave a residue. So you just line up your USB-C connectors between the uh, board and your phone, and you stick this sucker on there. And it's... That's, I'm holding the board and my phone is not falling off. It stays on pretty good. Doesn't take much space. Doesn't increase the profile. You could stick this in your pocket still. Um, if, as Vance said, if you were hiking or walking around, um, you could put it in your pocket. A little bitty, uh, a little bitty short stubby antenna, which I've got on order. It hasn't here yet. Uh, would only go out about that far. Wouldn't take much more space on your cell phone. And then a uh, little U-shaped. USB-C connector to plug it in to your cell phone. As soon as you plug it in, the app launches and it turns your cell phone into an HT. And it really works. So I'm gonna, I've put in a local repeater here, the WB6RER repeater. I just brought that up. KB9RLW testing. You can hear my Yezu in the background there. Um, so yeah, it's really cool. Uh, <laughs> I gotta admit, it's kind of cool. Uh, I hooked up a USB-C um, power meter. And here we can see the uh, power draw uh, during receive and transmit. This is the power draw when the system is idle. And uh, it's drawing about 127 milliamps, or about 0.6 watts. Not too bad. Uh, when you're transmitting, it draws about uh, 0.54 amps, 540 milliamps, about half an amp, uh, amp which is about 2.5, 2.6 watts. If we round that up, um, which again is not too terrible. Uh, most cell phone batteries are going to let you operate for quite a while with it. Now, um, some people are going to want to know about compliance. Well, Vance sent me this uh, tiny essay plot showing the second order harmonic is down. Uh, just a little bit more than 40 dBm, uh, which is just compliant. I think the rules require 40 uh, dBm down on the second order harmonic, and he's like 40.6 or something like that. Um, there is a low pass filter on the board. Oops, there we go. And that's, you know, providing that harmonic suppression. Uh, Vance informed me that he's been meaning to revisit that filter and try to improve upon it, which he has just done. And version 1.6 of the board is just coming his way for testing. So 
By the time you uh, order this, version 1.6 might be available with even better filtering, but as it sits, it is presently compliant. Now, if we go over and look at his website, he's got a very nice website at kv4p.com, and he talks all about it. He's got a great video here that demonstrates all the features it has, which I haven't touched on. It does text messaging. It has filtering. Uh, the text messaging uses APRS uh, message packets, so it's completely legal transmission. Of course, you would not want to do that on a repeater, but if you and a friend were on a simplex frequency, you could send each other text messages. So he has a nice video here on his site that goes through all of the details uh, on what the thing can do, um, descriptions of it, and a breakdown of it. And if you go to the Get Started page, uh, one hour and about $35 to build. Okay, so he has a, a complete uh, build video here. It takes you through soldering the components on and all that. He has a list and breakdown of all of the parts here, the RF module, the ESP32, a short antenna or a signal stick. He has a, an SMA connector, as gel pads. He has all the parts and things you would need here. Um, here's his note on the uh, update to the PC board with the uh, improved filtering. And then he's got steps, 3D print the case, uh, or find a friend that has it, a 3D printer, and print, have them print one for you. Um, soldering the parts on, put the case in, flash the firmware. He has a really nice web tool here that will flash the firmware for you when you plug in the ESP32. It works under Linux as well as Windows. I did it under Linux, no problems. So he gives you a nice breakdown of all the steps here in installing the Android app. Presently, the Android app is in beta, uh, but he's, he's close to having enough beta testers that it can get moved on to just the uh, regular Play Store. He does not have an Apple um, app for iOS, but he is working on finding somebody to help write that. Remember, this entire thing is open source. If we go to his contribute page, he has a Discord where you can discuss things. All the project files are available here. There's a GitHub project with um, the 3D printing files, the PC board files, the source code for the ESP32 and the Android app. It's completely open source. Anybody can extend this and add features to it. Uh, and I hope that somebody does because this is a really cool little project. Um, so he has all the information here, and here's his wish list of things that he would like help with. So if you are an, uh, an Android programmer or an ESP32 developer uh, or an Apple programmer, or you could contribute to this project, I would please consider doing so. The link to his website will be in the description below, but it is simply kv4p.com. It's not just limited to your cell phone. I've got it on my Google Pixel tablet, <laughs> and the app launches just fine, and me going to the local repeater here. KB9, KB9 RLW, RLW test. test. You can hear my Yezu back there. So yeah, uh, <laughs> it's kind of crazy, huh? <laughs> That's the biggest HT ever. <laughs> so yeah, it does text messaging, it does voice. It, it's a real basic, uh, cool little uh, HT that your, your phone becomes. <laughs> It's really kind of cool. I, I dig it. And of course, it is a completely open source project. Now, I've got some plans for this little guy. This is nice, the way that, this, that, that it sticks on the back of your cell phone like this, and you can just unplug the little um, USB thing and stick it on the back of the case, you know, if you're not using it. Um, yeah, okay. But I don't want to keep it on the back of my phone all the time. Uh, it's just not the way I work. What I'm going to do is, and it'll be coming up in a future video, is I'm going to rework this case. I'm going to come up with some kind of a case that has a custom cell phone case uh, that you can just drop your phone into when you want to use the HT. And I might also come up with a case where you could put this like up in your car window uh, and then, you know, run a, just to run a USB-C cable over to your phone on the dashboard. Um, or maybe clip it on the back of your hat. <laughs> Have it stick it up on the back of your hat with a cable going to your phone. Uh, you know, there's there's all kinds of possibilities. I'm going to play around with it, and I'm going to come up with some cases for it. But anyway, that's a look at the uh, KV4P HT, which turns your cell phone into a 2-meter HT. Pretty neat. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.